Hey guys, Worm from Worms Mass Academy. Um, I thought I'd have a crack at this exam because I just got it and uh, I'm not running my classes tonight at my uh, tuition centre, so I've got a, a virus or I've got a chest infection, uh, which is why I sounded so crappy last night, but my doctor's put me on some antibiotics, so hopefully I'll be better soon. Um, this is probably going to own me <coughs> because I'm um, not feeling the best. So let's see how we go. I've heard it's it's a reasonable paper, um, but when you can't concentrate, there's a pretty good chance you'll stuff it up. So let's see how we go. A two kilo mass is initially at rest on a smooth horizontal surface. Oh my God, what the hell? Someone just came to my doorbell. Um, initially at rest, the act is enacted on two constant forces that cause the mass to move horizontally. One force is a magnitude of that. Acts 60 degrees upwards. The other one is that. Find the normal reaction in Newtons that the surface exert. So does it want the normal reaction with the stuff or without it? Um... I'm going to go with those things inclusive. So our reaction force minus our mass, we've got to add those two on as well. So we know our reaction force is going to be 2G minus this here which is 5 sine of 30 minus 10 sine of 30. Okay, so 9.8, 19.6 minus sine of 30 is a half, 2.5 sine of 60, not 30 is root 3 on 2, so minus, um, I'm just going to write these as 5 on 2, 2g, and minus 5 root 3, because it would be 10 root 3 on 2, Newton. Find the acceleration of the mass after it begins to move. So we know... Does it say which way it's going? Assume it's going to the right. So we've got 10 cos 60 minus 5 sine 30. These are my horizontal forces. That's equal to my mass times acceleration. So my acceleration is 1 half. Cos of 60 is a half. So 5 minus 5 root 3 on 2 metres per second. Or we could say 5 root 3, 10 and a quarter. Okay, find how far the thing travels during the first 4 seconds of motion. So S is equal to UT, U is 0, plus a half AT squared. So S is equal to a half, one quarter, times T squared, four seconds squared. So we're going to get 2, 10 minus 5 root 3, metres per second, no, metres. That's metres per second squared. Um, I'm pretty sure that should be right. Um, I'm assuming, obviously, we've got to give it like that.
pretty sure that's right. Okay, evaluate this. Um, negative 1 to 0. So we'll let u equal 1 minus x. du dx. du is negative dx. Um, we know if x equals negative 1, u is equal to 2. If x is equal to 0 u is equal to 1. So the same uh, anti-diff, 2 to 1. Um, 1 plus x is going to end up being, when I sub that, I get x is equal to 1 minus u. So I get 2 minus u on u to the half du with a negative out the front, because dx is uh, negative du is equal to dx. We know this is, I'm going to say from 1 to 2, of 2u to the negative a half minus u to the half du, which we know is 4 u root u minus 2 on 3 square root u squared between 2 and 1. We're going to get 4 root 2 minus, that's u cubed. So that's going to be 8. So I'm going to get 2 root 2. I'm going to get 4 root 2 on 3 minus 4 minus 2 thirds. So if I subtract them, I'm going to get 8 root 2 on 3 minus, that's going to become 12, 10 on 3. So that looks reasonable to me. Okay, 1 on root 2 minus 1 on root 2. I, there and there. So we know R is equal to 1. Theta is negative pi on 4. So my first solution is cis negative pi on 4. The solutions, because it's the cube root, will be 2 pi on 3 apart. So we can say Z2 is negative pi on 4 minus 2 pi on 3. 12, 8, 3. Cis, negative 11 pi on 12. And then the other one is cis, negative pi on 4, plus 8 pi on 12, 5 pi on 12. <coughs> so they are the three roots in... polar form. Hmm. Forgot to divide the first one by three. I'm like, <sighs> because we know Z cubed is equal to cis of negative pi on 4. My first solution is going to be negative pi on 12 because we've got to divide it by 3. And then we've got a 2 pi on 3 is 8 pi on 12. So we get negative 9 pi on 12, which is 3 pi on 4. 
negative pi on 12, we're going to get 7 pi on 12. That's much better. Otherwise, it wouldn't have made sense. Solve the inequality 3 minus x is greater than 1 on x minus 4. Okay, what I'm going to do first, we know mod x minus 4, there's 4, mod x minus 4 would look like this. So it's reciprocal would look like this. So that's what 1 on x minus 4 is, and mod x minus 4. 3 minus x, we know it's got to go through 3, and it has a gradient of negative x. So we know they're going to intersect at one point, and that before that point, um, that's when this graph is going to be larger than this graph. So if I say, we know this graph is negative 1 on x minus 4, because it's the left-hand side of the graph, it's going to be the negative side. That's greater than 3 minus x. If I multiply it across to the left, I get 3 minus x, x minus 4, is greater than negative 1. Negative x squared minus... F no, positive x squared. No, negative x squared. Far out. Um, we've got... 3x and 4x plus 7x, and then we've got minus 12 is greater than negative 1. Um, let's divide through by a negative. x squared minus 7x plus 12 is less than negative 1. I forgot to divide that by a negative. x squared minus 7x plus 11 is less than 0. Um, we're going to have to x squared minus 7x. Half of 7 is 7 on 2 squared is 49 on 4. Minus 49 on 4 plus 44 on 4 is less than 0. Um, x minus... <coughs> we really only need to set it equal to 0 because we know what it's going to be based on the graph. Um, x minus 7 on 2 squared minus 5 on 4. So let's just find equals, 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 equals. X is equal to 7 on 2 plus or minus root 5 on 2. Because we've got, would be two solutions, because that graph would go like that as well, we know it's got to be the one to the left, therefore... Um, negative infinity is less than x, which is less than 7 on 2, or 7 minus root 5 on 2. So that's what that point there must be, 7 minus root 5 on 2, and it can't be equal to it. Okay, A is that, B is that. The vector resolute of A in the direction of B is that function. Find the value of M. So we know the vector resolute is A dot B, B on the mod of B squared. So if we do A dot B, we get 2. Um, negative 3m minus 1 over the mod of b the mod of b is 2 plus m squared 
and then that's multiplied by B, which is I plus M J plus minus K. So we know this has to equal this. So we can say 1 minus 3M, 2 plus M squared is equal to negative 11 on 18. If we cross multiply, we get 18 minus 54M equals negative 22 minus 11M squared. 11M squared minus 54M. That's going to be plus 40. 11M. M. 4. 10. Negative. Negative. Um, M is 10 on 11. Or... Four. M is an integer. So M is four. Find the component of A that's perpendicular to B. So we want to find A minus that. So we say two I Actually, we're going to be minusing 11 on 18 i plus minus 44 on 18 j plus 11 on 18 k. So let's put these on 18. 36 on 18 i minus 54 on 18 J and then 18 on 18 K which gives us 36 we get 27 on 18 I 54 let's check our minuses minus and then <clears throat> So minus 54 minus 44 is minus 98. Plus. Oh, it's minus minus. So because that's a negative, this would be the same as making this positive and then keeping that the same. So that would be plus, plus, and that would be minus. Okay, so we do get a different answer, 47 minus 10 and then plus seven. I and mean, we could take out one on 18 as well. 47i minus 10j plus 7k. That was a bit annoying. Okay, show that f dash of x is equal to that. So we know when we derive tan, Um, what is the derivative of tan? Derive tan, uh, arc tan, f dash of x is the derivative of the bracket on 1 plus the bracket squared. So 3 on 1 plus 9x squared. 6 raised to 18 times 2 is 36x, and then plus 36, which is 3 over 9x squared minus 36x plus 37. 
Hence, the point of inflection is at x equals 2. So if we know f of x is 3, 9x squared minus 36x plus 37 to the negative 1, f double dash of x is negative 3, 18x minus 36, derivative of the bracket, 9x squared minus 36x plus 27, 37, to the negative 2. If f double dash of x is equal to 0, 18x minus 36 is equal to 0. So 18x is equal to 36, x is equal to 2. Um, we could say f double dash of 1. If we put 1 into this, what are we going to get? We're going to get negative 3 times negative 18. We're going to get 9 minus 36 plus 37. So that's positive. And f double dash of 3, I'm just going to say it's negative because it's a point of inflection. Point of inflection. Okay, sketch the graph, label any asymptotes with our equation on the point of inflection. So, we know that the centre of the graph is now at pi. So, our asymptotes are going to be at 3 pi on 2 and pi on 2. Our point of inflection is at 2 and it's going to be at the middle point, so 2 pi. So, our graph going to go up. and curve like that. Asymptote, point of inflection. Y equals pi on 2. Okay, consider the function defined by this. Given that f of x and f dash of x are continuous over this. So let's find f dash of x is going to give us m, the bottom, that's 4, 10 inverse of x. That's x is less than 1, that's x is greater than or equal to 1. So 4, 10 inverse of 1 is equal to m. So m tan inverse of 1 is pi and 4. Um, so that makes sense. That's pi. No. Oh, stop. Fuck that up. <laughs> um, hang on. 1. What am I doing wrong? 4 tan inverse of x. Did I integrate it? I integrated it. Wow. Told you I'm not feeling great. Okay. 4, 1 plus x squared to the negative 1. Negative 4 times 2x on 1 plus x squared. Negative 8x on 1 plus x squared. x is greater than or equal to 1. So we know m is equal to negative 8 on 2 which is what? I forgot to square the bottom, which means that becomes a 4, which means that's a negative 2. OK, mx plus n. So therefore, we know m is negative 2 times 1 plus n. That is equal to 4 on 2, which is 2. Therefore, n is equal to 4.
Bunny are enclosed by the graph of the function 0 and root 3. Okay, so we know they intersect at 1. So our area is 0 to 1 plus 1 to root 3. Our initial graph is negative 2x plus 4 dx. Our second graph is 4 on 1 plus x squared dx. We know here negative x squared plus 4x plus 4 tan inverse of x. I was doing it for something later on in the question. That's a root 3. Okay, negative 1 plus 4 minus 0 plus tan inverse of root 3 is pi on 3. And then minus 10 inverse of 1 is just going to be pi on 4. When we times it by 4, we just get pi. So we end up with 3 plus pi on 3 square units. Wow, an easy integral for once. <coughs> Did I speak to you soon? Find the volume of the solid of the graph, and that is rotated about the x-axis. Give your answer in that form. Okay, from 0 to 3. So our volume is pi times x squared, which is going to be 4 x squared plus x plus 1 over x plus 1 x squared plus 1 dx from 0 to root 3. Now, <clears throat> I'm tipping... 4x squared plus x plus 1 over x plus 1 x squared plus 1 equals a over x plus 1 plus bx plus c over x squared plus 1. 4x squared plus x plus 1 a x squared plus 1 plus bx plus c x plus 1. Okay, if x equals negative 1, I forgot to bracket this bloody thing, what do we get? We get 4 times, we get 4 is equal to 2a, so a is equal to 2. If x equals 0, we get 4 is equal to 2 times a, Hang on, 0, we get 1 times 2, which is 2. In here, if we put 0, we get c times 1. Therefore, c is equal to 2. Let's let x equal 1. We get 1 plus 1 plus 1 times 4 is 12. 1 plus 1 is 2a, so we get 4 plus 2 times b, b is what we don't have, 2b plus 2 times 2. So here we get 8, if we divide it by 2 we get 4 is equal to 2b plus 2. Oh, x is 1, so that's just b plus 2. Um, so B is equal to 2. So they're all bloody 2. Okay, so pi. Let's put the pi at the front. In a gigantic bracket. So what have we got? We've got A over 2 over X plus 1 between 0 and root 3, and then we've got bx over x squared plus 1, so plus 2x over x squared plus 1, and then we've got plus 2 over, I'm going to say 1 plus x squared, dx. 
<clears throat> so we get pi, 2, they're all going to have 2s. Oh, no, we're not. 2 log e, x plus 1. plus log e x squared plus 1 plus 2 tan inverse of x. Let's see what we get. Pi, I'm going to get, if I put root 3 in, 2 log e root 3 plus 1 Plus, if I put root 3 in, I get 3 plus 1, which is 4. Which we know is 2 log e2. Tan inverse of root 3, we just said was pi on 4. So we get 2. Did I just say pi on 4? What was that? Root 3. It's pi on 3. Okay, now we can take out that 2 as a common factor. 2 log e, we can join these together. 2 root 3 plus 1 plus pi on 3. a is 2 root 3 plus 1. b is pi on 3. 2, I forgot my bloody pi. Okay, the concepts are harder than methods, but the actual working it out isn't that hard. Okay, consider the curve parametrically by that. We're going to have to find the arc length. So that's not the second derivative, it's the square of the derivative. Show that it can be written like that. Okay, let's have a look first. dy dt, that's not a t, is derivative of that, which is 1 over 1 plus t. I need to write it neatly. 1 over 1 plus t. And then if we derive this, we get negative 1 over 4, 1 minus t. So, dy dt squared is 1 on 1 plus t squared minus 2 times those two things multiplied. 1 on 4, 1 minus t squared because it's a difference of two squares plus, because that's going to be a plus when we multiply it by itself, 1 over 16, 1 minus t squared. Okay, so we get 1 over 1 plus t squared minus 1 over 2, because that will cancel without make it a 2, 1 minus t squared, and then plus 1 over 16, 1 minus t squared. A is 1, B is negative 2, C is positive 16. Okay, how much of a bitch is this going to be? Um, find the arc length of the curve from 0 to a half, give your answer in that form. Okay. <coughs> Therefore, a equals 1, b equals negative 2, c equals 16. Last one. Um, 0 to a half. We know that x is arc sine t dx dt is 1 on 1 minus x squared. Therefore, dx d... No, that's a t dx dt squared is therefore 1 on 
um, it's 1 minus t squared, but the mod of it. Do we need to worry about the mod in this case? Hmm. Let's have a look at our arc length. We know is from zero to a half. The square root, now I've got to put all this together. One on one plus t squared minus one on two, one minus t squared plus one on 16, one minus t squared, and then plus one on one minus t squared. Okay, so what can we do from here? Does this factorize nicely? Um, Because if this was the last term, we'd have 1 on 16, 1 minus t squared, no, 1 minus t squared, and then we've got the 2, the 1 plus t squared, and then the other one is... Um, One on one plus t squared. <clears throat> um, what have we got? One on one plus t squared. So that's the hell is that one? One plus t all squared. That's what that one should be. One plus t all squared. Okay. <clears throat> um. Because I'm thinking this, like they've all got to connect somehow. 1 on 1 plus t squared. What was the other one? 1 on 1 plus t squared. Negative 1 on 2, 1 minus t squared. That's 1 minus t all squared. Hmm. Um, I can't even see what the other bloody one was. Negative that, 16 that, 1 on 1 plus t squared. So this is 1 on 1 minus t squared. So those middle two are the same. At least they look it to me. The only difference is the two out the front. Um, we could write this as four, one minus t, all squared. And then if the first term was one on one plus t, and then the second term was minus one on two, 1 plus t, if we square that, do we end up with this? Because um, that would give us plus 1 on 1. supposed to be a 4. And a minus in the middle. That and that. 
if I square root that, I get 1 plus t. So if I get, I get 1 on 1 plus t squared, then I would get minus a half, 1 minus t squared. I think that's going to cancel out. So we would get 0 to a half. Um, that whole thing would be 1 on the square root of that, 1 on 1 plus t. That in the middle is going to be plus a half. So then we're going to have plus um, and then 1 on 4, 1 plus 1 minus t. squared dt but we've got to square root it so we end up with log e mod t plus 1 plus 1 quarter minus 1 quarter log e 1 minus t between a half and zero. So we get log e of a half minus one quarter log e of a half. When I sub zero and I get log of one and log of one, which are both zero. So we would get three quarters log e of one half, or, that doesn't make sense because it's negative. Why would it be negative? Oh, when I put a half into that, I get three on two. <clears throat> and then when I put a half into that, I get a half. Okay, so that makes more sense. Um, so I get log e three on two minus a quarter of log e a half, or that would be plus, and that would be a two. So we could get log e three on two plus one quarter log e of two. Jesus, that took way too long. That's actually quite hard to to factorize. I think they were trying to see, get you to see from this expansion that that, and that's going to factorise. But that wasn't happening for me. <laughs> so I think that's the right answer. What did it ask for? Log E M. They're rational, so there's a pretty good chance that they're all right. M, N, P. <clears throat> Hopefully I got it right. Oh, actually, I've got a calculator on here. I, oh, no, I can't. Or can I check? Yeah, we could. I'll just do it before I go. So it is from zero to a half. From zero to one half. The square root of ddx of sine inverse x squared plus ddx of log e t plus 1 or 1 plus x plus a quarter log e 1 minus x so derive that derive that and then square the answer 
I can't probably won't bloody be able to work it out. Squared dx invalid syntax. Okay, the derivative of that squared. Log e3 minus 3 quarters log e2. Log e3 3 quarters log e2 What's that as a decimal? Okay, now let's try ours. Log e3 on 2, I think it was. Minus a quarter. Log e of a half, but I think it was 3 quarters. A quarter. Yeah, yeah it's the same answer. So it must be right. Albeit, I was a bit retarded. Um, I think a lot of the, the algebra in that was a lot worse than methods, but who knows what um, what people think. All right, I'm off. I might try and do the methods later tonight. Bye.